let's discuss all the, all the treatments for second line therapy in no particular order, but I feel like we always have to start with splenectomy. So, Dr. Boucher. <laughs> Put me on the spot, right? <laughs> so we, uh, because of all these new agents, splenectomy has been pushed further and further out. And I think you can see from what you've heard from Amit about the comment, the, the preliminary uh, guidelines as Ash has put them out for comment right now, that they're still pushing back further on splenectomy. So we saw from both the original as well as the international working group recommendations of whatever that was six or seven years ago, that, uh, that because we have so many newer agents now available to us, the need for splenectomy is, is much less so. And as we, as we see longer durations of response, that will get pushed out further. And now we've, we call, instead of having acute and chronic ITP, right, we have the acute, persistent, and chronic. And that's, I think, further evidence that people are thinking less and less about splenectomy. But it still has a role. There's no doubt about it. It's the only currently curative uh, therapy that we have. About 80% of patients will be in remission for a year, but if you look at three or four or five years down the line, it really is down to 50%. Right. So Which it, is still a sizable number. And so it still has a role. Yeah. We can now do laparoscopic splenectomies, and so the potential morbidity and mortality of the operative procedure is lower, mm -hmm. so you can get more uh, frail and more elderly patients through it. The risk is, you know, we know of the encapsulated organism, lack of splenic macrophage immune problems that patients, but the, that's a very low rate. Yeah. So immunize, take the spleen out, I think it still has a role. You have a patient who doesn't want to take pain, or certain oral medications or is having side effects from it, doesn't want it to come to the clinic yeah. for weekly therapy, doesn't want the potential immune issues that rituximab can result in, then that's a patient, I think, for splenectomy. But for my patient population, um, the last time I had a patient agree to a splenectomy, and this is now having patients on either l or rimipolistim for years, I have, was probably four or five years ago was my last patient who we splenectomized. I've had one in 11 years. Yeah. One that agreed to it in 11 years. And I think that one of the problems is that we don't have a reliable way to really predict who will have a long-term durable uh, response after splenectomy. So it's hard to go through an elective procedure with no guarantee that it's gonna work. And the patients are pretty upset when they have their spleens out and then all of a sudden they're thrombocytopenic yeah. and they're coming at them with exactly. other yeah. recommendations. Absolutely, yeah. but I, I agree. It's, I think it's a good point also because the, because of the curative potential, I think we still should at least discuss it with the patient or at least bring it up mm -hmm. that, okay, these are some of the things we're considering, including possibly this, and, and this is why I may or may not recommend it for that individual patient. But I think it's at least worth definitely no noting because of the curative potential. Uh, but again, we don't have a predictor, but 50% is still, I think, uh, a fair number of patients who may achieve long-term cure who've already relapsed or have been refractory to corticosteroids up front. Yeah. And I think it's also important to tell patients that it does not appear, at least from data from trials, that if you get your spleen removed, that affects response postoperatively. And the drugs that are effective still have efficacy post splenectomy. So you're not really yeah, and it's you know, interesting. decreasing your treatment options. Yeah, I agree totally. And I, uh, it's interesting that that's the case because uh, it would be a, a theoretical question is that will patients still respond with various drugs post splenectomy? And the answer appears to be yes. Yeah. Um, so it's interesting, and I think that's why, not surprisingly, for all the reasons we're discussing right now, splenectomy has kind of fallen down the list as far as that. And the, I think the last point on that that I uh, have observed is that I feel that there are fewer surgeons nowadays who are perhaps willing to do it because the frequency of experience has diminished greatly in the past, I guess, 10 years at least. So especially the, the new surgeons coming out of training, mm -hmm. I think that they have much less experience in doing a splenectomy in an ITP patient than perhaps the you know more experienced Some surgeons. Some trauma or something. Yeah, yeah. correct, yeah. correct. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that.